Thank you very much for your presentation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'll give my best regards and high appreciation for all the attendance of this meeting and gratefully start my speech about hearing loss and cochlear implants. <coughs> According to Center for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta, USA, more people suffer from hearing, speech, and language impairment than heart disease, than blindness, than TB, MS, epilepsy, all kinds of the muscular dystrophies. Approximately 300 million people are either deaf or suffer from hard of hearing worldwide. And at least 15 mil 40 million of these people live in the United States. And one in every children is born deaf. We call it congenital deafness. And at least 60% of these children have the hereditary causes of deafness. At birth, usually the ear is complete, functional, and working. Even before birth, at five months of gestation, intrauterine, the fetus can hear. One of the first sense that the human person acquires is a sense of hearing at five months of gestation. And the last sense that the dying person loses is hearing. Only some myelinization occurs in the higher central pathways after birth. This clip shows clearly how the ear works. In case of sound waves striking the ear, they pass through the canal to the eardrum. From there, the sound waves are mechanically transmitted to the inner ear and amplified. In the inner ear, you can find the cochlea. The cochlea consists of three different canals. The middle canal is the organ of hearing and consists of sensitive hair cells. The hair cells can be stimulated electrically and forward the signal to the nerves and then onto the brain. In most cases of deafness, the hearing nerve still remains functional, but the hair cells have been damaged or even lost. A cochlear implant is a surgically implanted electronic device that provides a sense of sound to a person who cannot get benefit of the hearing aids. The person is deaf bilaterally, and the, the subject cannot get benefit of the hearing aids bilaterally. This is the the, the time for the cochlear implantation. At present, 400,000 people have been implanted worldwide. <coughs> Let's go through the history. First, we see Alessandro Volta, a, an Italian physicist and chemist. He has the credit of invention of the first electric battery cell. We thought his invention, it could be impossible to see the modern technology. He drew admiration and attention of the Napoleon Bonaparte, asking him to come to France. That painting shows that moment. The electrical unit we use nowadays as volt is in honor of his name. He was the man who dared to put two metal probes into his ears. 
and then connected it to a battery that he was inventor of that battery. And then he mentions, suddenly, I sensed a noise in my head. It was a jolt. It was a crackling sound. It was like a, a tenacious paste is bubbling. I was frightened, he mentions. I discontinued the experiment and didn't repeat it anymore. Nobody knows whether he knew that he was stimulating his auditory nerve or not, but he was. And this was the basic for the cochlear implantation that nowadays we use. One hundred fifty-seven years later, Giorno and Eris from France, they could stimulate the auditory nerve, the cochlear nerve, the nerve of hearing, for the first time documented. The subject was a patient who was bilaterally deaf with facial paralysis. They stimulated the auditory nerve. Inspired by their work, William House first attempted cochlear implant in the world. William House from LA. But unfortunately, the implants failed and he was urged to remove the implants because of the infection. But 11 years later, again, William House implanted the first FDA-approved single-channel cochlear implant. 78, Graham Clark from Australia, the first multi-channel cochlear implant. And the multi-channel was approved for adults, 85, five years later for children, 10 years later for children as young as 12 months of age. And nowadays, we use cochlear implants for kids as young as six months. This clip clearly shows how the cochlear implant works. In a cochlear implant system, sound enters a microphone and travels to an external mini computer called a sound processor. The sound is processed and converted into digital information. This digital information is sent over a transmitter antenna to the surgically implanted part of the system. The implant will turn the sound information into electrical signals that travel down to an electrode array inserted into the tiny inner ear or cochlea. The electrodes directly stimulate the auditory nerve, sending sound information to the brain. Bypassing the damaged inner ear, the cochlear implant provides an entirely new mechanism for hearing. Criteria for selection of the patients. When the patient cannot get benefit from the hearing aids and the subject is bilaterally deaf, this is the main indication for selection of the patients. After that, the auditory pathways and the auditory nerve should be intact and working, and there could be no contraindication for general anesthesia. These are the main indication and selection for the patients. The earlier the better because of the plasticity brain. We have a golden time for the cochlear implantation. That golden time is six months to two years. The subject could get more benefit of it. When the cochlea is not formed 
and we have the absence of the cochlear nerve or hearing nerve, we could do nothing for the subject. Complications for the usury for this procedure is rare, maximum 4% for infection that could be nicely controlled. Outcome is very dramatic. In a study in John Hopkins, it was revealed that if we implant a three-year-old kid, the society can save thirty to fifty thousand dollars because that subject is more likely to go to the mainstream school than go to a special school. Two Shirazi girls that have been implanted in the Mazish Hospital in Shiraz. Post-operative rehabilitation is more important than the procedure itself. The procedure is not very difficult. We get the device nicely engineered. We put the wires into the round window. That's it. That's what the surgeon does. But post-operative rehabilitation is very important. It takes time, days, weeks, months that a subject can understand a word, a meaningful sentence. So post-operative rehabilitation. And because of the sanctions we had during war, we need the device from the manufacturer, software and hardware. And this was a difficulty for us during the war. We need to know some notifications. These patients usually have a, an identification card because they are carrying a, an electronic device with themselves. They could securely pass through the security metal detectors in a stores at airport, no problem at all. And the device won't interfere with the navigational and communication system of the aircraft. Only for CT scan and swimming, only the outer part could be removed. But MRI is very dangerous. Only in very special circumstances, we advise and program to have a 0.2 to 0.3 Tesla MRI. But as a whole, very dangerous and may kill the patient. Before going to bed, only the outer part is removed because of the risk of damage to the device. And scuba diving is another item which is very dangerous. In the United Kingdom, usually the NHS covers cochlear implant in full as does the Medicare in Australia, a Department of Health in Ireland. In the United States, the cost runs from 45 to more than $100,000. Some part of it may be covered by the insurance services. But we use nowadays two cochlear implants, so the cost is double. A cochlear implant will not cure the deafness at all. When the hearing aid is switched off or the cochlear device is switched off, the subject cannot hear at all. Deaf again. It's only a prosthetic device for the hearing at present time and with the present technology we have. But the, for, for a near future, we are looking forward to see good news from the reparative and regenerative medicine to find a cure for deafness. But at present time, the cochlear device is very effective, especially for deaf blind patients. They will find it very dramatic improvement in their abilities. For the future, we are going to implant the outer part of the device as well. We call it totally implanted cochlear implant. Or get assistance from robots. 
or Hi-Fi featuring 50 channels. Nowadays, we have 22 channels. The more we cover the channels, the better the subject get benefit of the cochlear device. The human subject can hear between 20 to 20,000 hertz. 20 hertz is right, like a rumbling sound, and 20,000 is a whistling sound. Some animal species can hear more than these frequencies. For example, the dolphins can hear up to 100,000 hertz, and some bat species up to 200,000 hertz. There is a phrase that says, as blind as a bat. But if the bat could talk to us, they would say, as deaf as a human. <laughs> <laughs> because they hear the ultrasound. A hybrid system is a combination of the hearing aid and cochlear implants for the future. But this one is, we are looking forward for the, the last item which uh, good news, we have to hear from the regenerative medicine. Recently, they have found stem cells in the cochlea, the inner ear, that could be converted and differentiated into hair cells. And this would be the cure for the future, right? The hope for the cure of the deafness. Not these prosthetic devices that when they are switched off, the subject cannot hear anymore. In Shiraz, into Iran as a whole, the first cochlear implant, 1992, Shiraz, 2003, with 1,200 cochlear implants. We have 11 centers of cochlear implants in Iran, not all of them of the main centers. Some of them are attached to the bigger ones. At present, uh, the statistics says that more than 6,500 cochlear implants have been performed in Iran. The cost of each cochlear implant is 12,500 euros, and including the rehabilitation and post programming procedures goes up to seventeen to eighteen thousand dollars. Cochlear Center in Namazi Hospital, the kids have been uh, implanted. The one is very interesting with Nana Sangak in hospital. <laughs> Traditional bread. <laughs> Enjoy some of the Iranians' heritage views three months ago. <laughs> Persepolis, my son. Again, Persepolis. Hafizie. <laughs> Sadie. Looks to be Switzerland, but it's Dana Mountains around Shiraz. Thank you very much for your attention. I would like, thank you. I would like to extend my thanks to IHF, Mr. Siamak Bagheri, Mr. Ali Narvani, Mr. Baziar Mirskandari, PIMA, and all the organizers of this event. Thank you.